JP. Yeah. Do you know what platform we use to get our podcasts out there? We use Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout, baby. And if you want to start a podcast and you want to get going with it, but you're not sure what to do, go to Buzzsprout.com because they have tons of tutorials that tells you what to do, what's the best equipment out there to get, to get started, and all kinds of good walkthroughs. And if you use our promo code, you get a $20 Amazon gift card. That's worth it right there. Yeah, baby, Christmas is right around the corner. That's oh, yeah. a stocking stuff right there for you favorite aunt or uncle perfect there you go buzzsprout use our promo code thank you mm -hmm. jp episode 59 59 we're climbing buddy yes sir you know what i've been thinking hmm. all this negativity we need some good energy dude we got we got some good feedback oh yeah yeah on the the charts we're, we're climbing oh yeah we're number 37 in the u.s for entertainment news yeah it's that's, pretty cool i think that's cool yeah number 14 in australia shout out to the australia listeners i guess yeah, yeah no kidding huh? that's awesome our guest tonight is amelia love the happiness guru welcome to our podcast amelia Thank you. It's great. It's great to be on. So yeah, my name's Amelia Love and I'm known as the happiness guru. Sometimes people get it mixed up and think I'm a love guru and I'm like, no, 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 that's not my <laughs> thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm about happiness generally in humanity. That's my thing. Yeah, that's where I wanted to start off with is like, how do you describe yourself and what got you into this uh, line of work? Because it's very interesting. So um, I think I'm going to be a bit deep as a way of starting is that I do think that our souls chose the journey, especially where we are now. I think we chose this before we came down here and we've just been our lives until now have been a process of remembering who we are. Uh, for me, I was very, very sick in 2003 for a good three, four years and could not do anything. I was stuck in bed. So I just read books and I ended up reading over a thousand books all about psychology and herbs and whirling dervishes and all kinds of everything, feng shui, all sorts of things. Anyway, um, once I got better, um, I'd obviously learned some things. My vibration had risen a little bit and I had um, managed to work out how to cure myself so that I wouldn't yield anymore. So I did that. And then I went back to the music industry and I, I, I was a rapper. So I was in that. And then in 2009, I had an emotional experience whereby I made some bad decisions. And I realized that there was something in my mind that wasn't there for my best good. There was something actually trying to guide me in the wrong direction, something that was an enemy within. And I wanted to work out what it was, where it came from and how the hell to get rid of it. So for the next two years, I studied again. Now, in studying the darkness within humanity, you naturally start learning about the darkness outside in humanity, i.e. some of the stuff we're dealing with now, all of the satanic ritual stuff, uh, the fact that we're dealing with, you know, dark occult magicians. So in learning how the human mind was affected by the darkness within, I ended up learning both things. So then fast forward to now, 10 years later, I'd left the music industry. I'd launched my coaching company. I'm teaching women how to become happy. And then uh, COVID happens. And suddenly I look around and absolutely nobody knows what's going on except for the few mentors I've had, like Sean Stone, Simon Parks, you know, people like that. And so I was like, it's time for me to step up and fill that role. So straight away I was, you know, how did we get here with COVID? Where did it come from? What happens next? And I literally just went into that mode. So I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, That's perfect. You you <clears throat> have covered it all full circle, it sounds like, and I like that. I had no idea about the music uh, career side of you. That's really interesting. I think that it helps. Um, you'll notice a young pharaoh's a rapper, Montaga, who's running for Senate in New York against a AOC. He's an ex-rapper. Um, and so there's something about being a rapper in that we're very good at formulating our sentences for maximum impact with the least amount of words. And we also know when we passionately disagree with something, how to channel that and get that through because it's literally a skill we perfected. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That's an interesting right. point. Um, while, while we're talking about this topic um, and dark energy and things like that, what, what have you seen in the music injury that, or injury, industry that has related we're not to that? Rappers. Nope, <laughs> obviously not. <laughs> we have hard times with tinnitus. <laughs> um, so the thing is, is... I think, I mean, I left the industry because the energy just didn't resonate anymore. I couldn't do it anymore. And even then it was just because everybody was always trying to figure out whether they were further ahead than you 
um, or whether you were further ahead and they needed to suck up to you. It was kind of like, you know, that sort of thing yeah, in the day to day world. Then in the really advanced, you know, superstar world, what did I see there? I did see some people that were quite lost. And towards the end, um, through some information Simon Parks gave me, that there is actual true mind control on some of these characters at the top. Um, and that's why I'm so proud of Kanye, because he's actually broken it. But the reason he's broken it is because he asked God to break it and God broke it for him. And I know that because none of the others have broken it because you literally, you can't break it by yourself, that level of mind control. Yeah, Kanye's a, a very interesting one too, because he, I think he was very deep on the opposite side and um, mm -hmm. was being tempted by the devil, in my opinion. Because mm -hmm. his, his lyrics and songs and stuff, he was definitely far in Absolutely. and then... He had to climb out of that hole to, to find God, I'm sure. But he's out, and that's the thing, yeah. and, and that makes a big difference because with this new earth that we're creating, what we need is billionaire light workers. And for anyone who's watching, you will there's a mind control program that's going to be triggered in a lot of people that hear me talking about Kanye. They'll be like, Ugh, she's talking about celebrities. Ugh, who's this girl? Ugh, oh, well, he ain't doing anything. Oh, he's a Kim Kardashian. That's actually a mind control program that was released on him for you to think he's a complete crazy idiot and that anyone who likes him is a crazy idiot. So all I can say to people is do watch the interview he did with Joe Rogan. It's nearly three hours long. If you haven't watched that, you cannot give an opinion about him because that is him now, now that he's broken the mind control. Previously, yes. But the difference is he actually knows that previously he was off and he says it and he's aware of it. So it's different. Right. And we have to bet it, we have to give people the chance to come out of that stuff too. You can't just pin somebody on that and never let them progress and, and improve because we're always constantly improving and being better people. If we hold other people down like that, this is that doesn't say much for us. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm actually just being given a vision um, of the future and I'm being shown a bridge. And on this bridge, a lot of people from the other side want to cross over to our bridge and we do have to welcome them. We will have special healing centers and things that they will go through to actually heal from the satanic ritual abuse that they have endured, uh, some of it generational. Um, so that's just showing that, you know, on the other side, when we create this new earth, you know, a lot of people are going to be calling for blood to start with, with a lot of these people. But in reality, many of them were abused as children and come from these, you know, generational families that have been serving the cabal and um we need to welcome them if they want to come onto the light side the, the light and love side yeah i totally agree <clears throat> yeah that's a a very very deep subject right there for sure there's a lot of that what <clears throat> i definitely want to come back to that later though but i want to know more about the roots of you and um why why are you not pursuing music at all anymore um, um I mean, I go where I'm told to go. Um, and that was, I was told to set up the coaching company. So I did that. That's going very well. Um, I've been told the next thing is for me to bring out the clothing. So that's about to happen. That's literally about to happen. I can't, I have, can't announce anything yet because we're literally, it's on the, the edge of happening right now. Um, and then who knows in the future? I was never happier than when I was in the booth recording and I'm still friends with you know a lot of people that are in the industry and things like that and people with studios and stuff but right now it's not my focus so it's possible i'll circle back maybe next summer um or maybe even a couple more years from then on the other hand it's more than likely that i'd probably end up with a label and be like one of the new earth labels that takes on all the latest talent you know all the, the new positive talent because i seem to be aware of a lot of who they are and so I may have them, and then who knows, maybe I'll be one of them Puff Daddy people that pops in and does features. <laughs> <laughs> Feature in a million. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah, um, the whole music thing is interesting, but I think it's really cool that you are going where you think you, or you feel like you are being pushed to, and you're happy doing what you're being guided to right now. It's, that's really awesome. If everybody yeah. had that, that'd be really cool. Well, yeah, I mean, we will all have it eventually. It's just the healed mind. When your mind is healed, you right. no longer have the distracting shadow voice trying to distract you in the wrong direction and you only have the pure light, love, godly, higher self voice guiding you. And when you know how to listen to it and not only listen but obey, your whole life changes and it's always guiding you to what is for your best good. So you don't fight it because you just know that it's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, so that's your advice for anybody like trying to seek that that path and that guidance is to kind of just stop fighting the the calling that you're getting or how, how would you say that? 
I would say first step is to heal yourself. It's like I said, it's, it's just a natural state for a healed mind, but first you have to achieve that. So healing your mind should be your first thing. What that is often doing is visiting your past and releasing a lot of resentment, anger, typically towards one or other parent or a sibling or a, or a, um, a step parent, something like that, but releasing anything from the past that has any negative connotations to it so that you can be fully in the present. Um, because the ego, the shadow side within actually eats uh, negative emotions that are held in your subconscious from your childhood. So when you release the negative emotions from your childhood, the ego doesn't have anything to eat. So it falls asleep. And when it falls asleep, then your head becomes quiet. Now you can hear the voice of God, your higher self. And it's like you had two GPSs running, one telling you the bad directions in a, sorry, one telling you the good directions in a quiet voice, one telling you the, the loud directions that are wrong. And so now when you starve the ego, this one turns off. So now you have this gentle voice guiding you. And that's what my life's like. I'm just following that. All of humanity is listening to both of them. And then the people that are really evil are just listening to this one. Mm. that's a really cool way yeah. of putting it yeah, it makes it, it easy to understand makes a lot of sense so you have that lovely english accent <clears throat> when did you come over to the states where are you from originally uh, i'm from london um i first came over in 2007 and it's all just connected to the music industry um you know back in the day my myspace was popping and you know music <laughs> people in atlanta and new york were contacting me and I recorded an album with Coptic in New York at 50 Cent Studio. Then I went to Atlanta, was managed by Brian Michael Cox, um, did a mini album at Neo Studio with a guy called B Major, who does, who at the time recorded all of Neo stuff. So, you know, I did a few things um, and um, it was a lot of fun at the time. And then in that time, I was traveling backwards and forwards a lot. And I just fell in love with the sunshine. I love the long summers. I basically like to, I actually still sunbathe in my bikini in November if it's warm enough on my balcony. Like I like <laughs> I want to sunbathe. <laughs> and that would be impossible in England right now. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. I've never been to Europe at all. I don't know anything about it. I just know what's on TV and the movies. Is it, is it really like that where you don't have much sunshine? Oh yeah, it's great. Gloomy. It's great. If if you get a sunny day in in London in the summer, it literally is heaven on earth. Wow. It's just rare. It could happen any time between April and September. <laughs> oh, that's so bizarre. Yeah. yeah, I grew up in Louisiana, and it's just a freaking toaster down there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's hard to imagine somewhere that's basically gray and rainy is normal. So when it is sunny, everyone's like, oh, it's great. How everyone's like, it's a big deal. Whereas, you know, in Atlanta, everyone's just like, this is normal, you know, or whatever yeah. in LA or, you know, places like that. Hey, but on the, on the glass half full side of that, when you do have a nice day, it's, I mean, people actually appreciate it. I take yeah, a lot of nice days granted. for granted. <laughs> oh yeah, we do. We're yeah, right next to the Rocky need... Mountains and we have a beautiful view every day too. It's easy to take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Oh, so true. Yeah. In England, it is funny though, because when it is hot though, everyone complains because there's no air conditioning. So it's kind of like, you know. <laughs> there's no air conditioning at all? No, because it's, it's so, because it's just not needed. And then when it is needed, it's for like five days and then oh. it's not needed again. So no one has it. So your energy bill <laughs> must be a lot better there. <laughs> it's literally, if it's hot, they're like, oh, you're hot. Open a window. That's what people say in England. <laughs> Wow, that'd be so strange. Okay, <laughs> for me for sure. So, yeah. what's your what's your take on everything going on right now with this election uh, craziness? Because it is a disaster, and it seems like we're kind of being baited for another um, rioting and protesting. It's, if, to my opinion, it feels like the left is being baited to be chaos baited right now because it's obvious that there's so much corruption going on that the results that they have right now are not the final results and it's just going to cause people to get super pissed off and start destroying stuff because they're not getting the honest truth by the media yeah so i think that they are attempting a number of setups and that's one of them but it won't succeed um yeah. the thing is is that there is nothing that's taken place in this last few weeks that has taken Trump by surprise. In fact, I think he knew six months ahead of time of every single thing that's happened. So there's a plan for everything. And people can say whatever they like about Trump, but he's one of those people who's in it to win it. He will have a plan and they haven't pulled out any stops that he didn't know about. So what that means is, yes, obviously the dark side, their, um, their saying is order from chaos. So they are trying, attempting to cause chaos so they can come in and bring the order. Um, 
but at the same time, I don't believe they're going to achieve it. Um, I'm going to be quite controversial and say that I think a lot of people on Hunter's dad's side are absolute pussies. I really do. So I think that like <laughs> a bunch of, I really do. Like all the tough people are on, on this side. I mean, come on. It like, sure feels that way. It really is. There, a lot of them are just skinny and weak and lost and silly, you know? Um, and so I just think that what's going to happen is they're going to try and incite that. But I think a lot of the Antifa members that they were keeping it up, keeping in hotels, expensive hotels, I think now that they've got on this bit and they're announcing, I think they're starting to send them home. I don't think they're going to keep them there ongoing the way they were. I think they were keeping them there for until election day. And so I, I don't think they're going to be as organized either. So I think they're a bit lost. I think they're spinning in circles a bit. I was given a download a while ago that the same way nothing they've done has surprised Trump, everything he does surprises them. And the problem is, he is an individual man able to make individual decisions. He can turn like this, he can do this. They are like a big loping monster with 10 heads and 20 legs. And for everything that they do, they have to have a Bilderberg meeting every year to plan out what their targets are gonna be. And the addendum and the this and the 2021 COVID something, everything's like this big long drawn out paperwork thing because there's so bloody many of them and for it to be communicated across the world. So what happens is when he makes these sharp moves, they're like lolloping to try and cut, they're, they're just one step behind all the time. So they're big, they're strong, they're powerful and they're rich, but they're kind of lolloping about because they can't move agile the way he can. Yeah, very true. I was thinking about this the other day. Um, I was watching all the people that I follow on Instagram and social media that's in California that are, that lean more towards the left. I don't know if they do it because of the business, the industry they're in, or if they genuinely feel that way, but there's, there seem to be very happy now that they've got their way, which reminds me of kids. Like if I gave my kids ice cream, they're going to be in a great mood for about 30 minutes until they go crazy from the sugar and stop listening. So and like, part of me is like, I, it's nice to see these people happy. I'm happy for them that they're enjoying it, but you know, what they're enjoying is not genuine and the intention of what the policies of everything with Biden is just a disaster. Sorry, you, know, my, it, you know, the outcome is coming too. Sorry, <laughs> you know my age. My angels just showed me something really gross. My angels were like, they said, it's like giving someone a curry that you know has food poisoning in it. Like watch them enjoy it, but like yeah. you know, things are not gonna go well. Exactly. <laughs> it's like you planned a big birthday party for a bunch of people on a day, you know, there's gonna be a terrible storm and like everybody's excited for that party, but you don't know what's coming. Like it's not what you think it is. And I think, I think you're being very nice about it. I mean, I'm trying I, to be. Uh, yeah, yeah. The thing is, is that I'm not being political and that's what people will have to understand. I am about team good, team evil. Um, you know, I didn't even know who the prime minister was of England most of the time when I even lived there. Like it was not, it's not my thing. I'm not into it. I'm not interested in it. But right now this election is the election for the soul of the planet. This is this different. This is what it feels like for sure. This, this is different. Whether, whether this country becomes a CCP run, um, you know, place that most of us wouldn't even want to live in or whether we can actually improve things is what's going to be decided by this. So it's not even about, oh, these are liberal values, this is this, is that, none of that. Because the fact is everything that they're saying, Hunter's dad's side is bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. 100%. All of it's bullshit. They just want everyone to have the needle thingies and uh, passport health thingies and basically be like little robots and take away all your property and do all this shit. Like, this is like, this is literally CCP for anyone who doesn't know. This is Communist China Party ruling. And um, so we can't, it's not even, it's almost, I think it's just naivety. I mean, I got that the other day that a lot of the people that are on the bad side, they're there because out of naivety, either they have hate in their heart because they have too much spiritual healing to do that they haven't done. So they're, the mind control program of hating Trump has firmly rooted inside their heart. That's the first one, hatred, naivety. The yeah. second one is um, innocence. They're just from such a nice family and have had such a nice life that they just can't imagine that anyone would have anything horrible on their laptop or anyone would hurt children or that anyone would steal or that anyone would do deals against America. Why would anyone do that? The government loves me. Yes, like my daddy. Like, you know, that's what people, there's the innocence naivety. self so frustrating too. 
self-centered naivety where they're just damn selfish and don't self-absorbed and they just off getting on with their lives and they don't care about others which means they then don't end up doing any research because they're so self-absorbed with their own needs and their own wants and their own desires and then we have the people that are too comfortable which is kind of a cross between your innocent and your self-centered whereby you know, maybe they have a good job, maybe they earn good money, maybe their job hasn't been affected by everything that's going on. And they basically don't think that their life can be affected because their life in the last 30 years hasn't been affected. So they don't see the next 10 years being any different. It's right. really like that kind of thing. So I think people that are on the wrong side, it's down to naivety. But the only solution is things like what we're doing, which is spreading the knowledge and spreading the information and making it available, you know? Yeah, for sure. That's a good way to put it. And the way you just said uh, the right side and the wrong side it makes me, <laughs> I'm going to start saying the wrong side and the right side instead of <laughs> the left side, right side, because <laughs> it really does feel like the wrong side, man. They, it, it frustrates me so much how, um, how much of like a tribal pack thing that it feels like they have. There's not like one, if you separated one and then asked them genuine questions about like policies or anything like that, why they hate Trump so much, they have no true facts to back any of that shit up. It's just all, emotional drama that they, they uh, the feed off the of each other mm-hmm. it's so aggravating the, the hate in the heart thing is what it is it's yeah. basically that they have it's actually there's a certain level of self-hatred within them basically you have to have a level of self-hatred which is again this ego this shadow side you have this self-hatred and it means that when they put out the hatred mind control programming through the project mockingbird television it will then go in and just it's like imagine it just goes flies and goes chee, chee, chee slot straight in because they've got the space for it because they have this self-hatred and so they can and it's it's subtle it's subtle any of them that hear this this will trigger the shit out of them but it's okay because i'm intending that to happen um and so the thing is is basically once they have understood that it's like when you have hate in your heart it's easy to be converted to hate someone else but once your heart is filled with love it's hard to make you hate someone else so it is very interesting, you know? The other thing I found about the wrong side is they, are, they tend to be people pleasers and they tend, to be, um, ten, they tend to want to fit in. They tend to be the ones that were bullied at school or the ones that their worst nightmare is to not be part of the in crowd or, you know? So they're very easily led and they yep. don't want to stand out and they're not brave and they are followers. Tell them, Amelia. Amelia. Yeah. <laughs> No so tell him, tell him, <laughs> speaking the truth. Yeah, I saw on the news the other day there was a um like a middle aged black lady and she was saying like they asked her how do you feel now that Biden has been elected, and she screamed like really really obnoxiously loud, and then said, oh that's how I feel, and she said I can finally breathe again. I'm like dude, what are you talking about? Was Trump holding you underwater? What the hell is going on? It's I don't just- understand this delusion that they have that Trump was so trying out to kill everybody and. They make him out like he's the leader of the KKK and he's sacrificing gay people. It's like, it's so ridiculous. No, whereas in fact, the other guy was best friends with the leader of the KKK. Yeah, no he kidding. Sacrificing small people. So it's quite interesting, really. But then that's the thing they like to that's accuse. overlooked. People. Yeah, they like to accuse people of stuff that they do, they're doing themselves. It's very simple. We can bring this down to just one thing. And it is those that question the media and those that don't. Yeah. It's mm, that that's simple. True. It's that simple. And again, if we go back to those examples I gave you, if the media is releasing the vibration of hatred and that resonates with the hate in their heart, then they can't separate from it. If the uh, innocence has made them feel that that's what they're meant to do, that they're meant to watch this, this is what they're supposed to do in the comfort, you know, do you see what I'm saying? All these levels of naivety, um, it's almost like the mind control program is tuning into that in them. And then it's trying to tune into that in the people that have free thinking and free thought and critical thinking and actually don't have hatred in their heart. And it just rebounds. That's the problem. You see, it's just not working in everybody anymore. Yeah. A friend of mine, a, a gay friend of mine, um, him and I got into an argument about all this kind of stuff a couple of months ago. And he said that nobody questioned the media and said fake news and all this kind of crap until Trump came in office. Like a lot of people who were thinking outside of the box did. But a lot of mainstream people didn't. But that's a good thing. People need to question what the hell's going on around them. It's not a bad thing. It, well, yeah, again, it's otherwise, all about it's perspective like, on that shit. Well, yeah, otherwise, again, it's like trusting that the, the government and the media love you like your daddy. That's, right. I keep 
absolutely the same thing. It's like, do, do, do they love you? Do they love you like your daddy and your mommy? Do they love you? Do they love you? You know what I'm saying? Money. You know, and if you All can't money. they love you, then, you know, maybe you need to think about other things. And yeah, like I said, you know, I learned about this stuff in 2009. So it really wasn't a surprise when it came, it came about. But at the end of the day, you know, it's just, it's time now for people to pick a side. You're on team good or team evil. And if you were on team evil by mistake, then we'll let you come over. Just do some research. Right. Yeah. Uh, you Think really for yourself. look at what's, what's best for, for the people. What's really best for people. Not your feelings. What's best yeah, for the not people. Not your feelings. What's, what are logical decisions. Right. And there's, there's good decisions on both sides, I think. I mean, some, some plans are good. Some plans are bad on both sides. But you got to really decide which, what's the good Again, plan. one of them's lying to you, though. That's the difference. One of them's right. lying to you, and one of them is in the pocket of the CCP. That's right. the difference. One of them is a satanic pedophile. For real. Yeah. For real, for the real. The thing that gives me the most confidence about Donald Trump is that He's not a career politician. He's obviously a pansy that grew up spoiled, which is, that's out of his control. It is what it is. But what do you do with that life? And uh, I think he takes so much pride in defeating people and proving them wrong and trying to trying to win people over. I think that works in our favor. I think he, he sees all these good people that are counting on him and that have these high expectations for him. So he tries to live up to those standards. So it kind of we're kind of his dad in a way. Like It's like we're guiding him. It's really cool if you look at it that way. And I, that's why I have a lot of confidence in him because he has such an ego that he wants to prove that he is that guy. And he wants to be uh, um, the one that's yeah. a good leader, basically. I agree. And just for anyone who's confused, that's a different terminology for ego. So it's not the same ego I'm talking about. That's the right. thing. That, so no, he has, he has a very strong self, sense of self. And the thing is, is that with Trump is that basically only someone who grew up around them that lived like them can defeat them right and that's what people don't understand i don't think he's an earth angel i don't think he's a light worker i do think he's working for god but i don't think he i think he is a regular person who's actually cut from the same cloth as these people he just chose the side of good and he could yeah. easily have been on that side but he isn't and then just um because time's flying by the one thing i would say is that there is a group of people who i'm calling the stupid intelligence or the intelligent stupids and they're the ones that are talking about how there's you know don't vote because they're both the same and the problem is that's a mind control program as well and the mind control program is basically a lot of the people that are saying that are actually quite advanced they're actually spiritually and vibrationally quite high level beings and they're actually going to have quite a, a big role once we jump across the river and get to the sort of 5D. We're in 3D now. We've got to cross the river, which is 4D. And then 5D is the new earth and the new world and the, the lovely world that we can really bring in and create. So there's a lot of people that are going to be leaders on that side. And for some reason, those people, they haven't finished their um, spiritual healing work. And so there's a mind control program going into them where they are spewing oh it doesn't matter two wings are the same bird and oh it doesn't matter and you've seen you've seen them um and the thing is is it's a program just to try and confuse the people on this side of the stream because the fact is is that the only way to cross the stream is to jump on one of the rocks there's two rocks there's a sharp solid rock which is trump and there's a slimy rickety one which is uh hunter's dad and so basically we have to land on one of them to make it to the other side. So one of them, we're very likely to slip. And I don't know how long it will take us to eventually get to the other side. I really don't. It will take a long time. And one of them, it will be relatively quick because we can do a solid jump onto the solid rock and then do a solid jump to the other side. So that's something for people to look out for as well, is that there is these uh, intelligent stupids that will really shine once we bring in this new world for them, but just before we leave this one, they're going to, re they're really holding things up by confusing people. Cause a lot of them have high followings. They're entertainers, they're singers, they're, they're coaches, they're spiritual people like me. And they're saying this stuff and it's not helping anyone because it's not helping anyone. The journey consists of here to here to here. So telling them not to land on one of these rocks, it's like, what should we do? Pop up? Like, it doesn't make sense. You see what I'm saying? There's no way across the river. Yeah, that's very true. I spent the majority of my life being modest, stupid. I'm not intelligent, stupid, but I was like that same mindset, this two wings, one bird shit. Like I, 
I stayed out of politics up until maybe like five years ago, six years ago or some shit. But my whole adult life, my whole life, I kind of just lean towards whatever my parents thought because I trust their opinions. Like, if you guys think that's a good person, like, yeah, I back you. I'm not smart enough to do my own research. And then I started to wake up. I was like, I got to do my own research. My parents are not going to be around forever. It's my responsibility as an adult to do my own research. And <clears throat> when you start digging into shit, you realize it's actually entertaining, too. Like, uh, the whole political system is like the Game of Thrones. It's, uh, there's a lot of stuff, and it's constantly being moved. It's a very interesting mm -hmm. game. A lot of secrets, a lot of betrayal, a lot yeah. of, you know, just to claw your way to the top. It's very interesting to see what people will do to get to power. Yeah, it's, and it's that wild. obsession to get to power, too, is such a strange thing. Mm -hmm. It really is. The thing is, as well, though, is that five, six years ago, you were right, which is why how I describe it is as if there's a 10-chapter book. There's a book with 10 chapters, and these intelligent stupids read nine chapters, and then they didn't read the last one. And the last one explains about how the military were going to try and stand up to Obama. They were going to try and do it on their own. And then they approached Trump. He said, yes, that then made them into this really strong team. They were going to try and do it anyway, because they knew someone had to stop this evil and the destruction of humanity. And so it's like, so the information was correct to a point. So let's imagine you're someone with that mind control program running. You're going to find evidence of it everywhere saying, oh, you know, two wings of the same bird, because there was everything up until just a handful of years ago, it was true. And then Trump came in out of nowhere and this was, he's not part of the plan. Hillary was meant to be in. They weren't expecting anything else. That totally threw them. Well, that, that makes me feel better about it. And now you say that, it makes a lot of sense too because everybody up until him were all career politicians and they're mm -hmm. all part of the same uh, factory where they're all made to be the same shit over and over. Like I don't trust the Bush family just as much as I don't trust the Obamas and Bidens. Oh, yeah, none of them. Yeah, Clinton's especially. Yeah, they're none worse. of them. No, only, only one would be Kennedy, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't think Kennedy, not that it's all about party bullshit, but I don't think Kennedy would have stood as a Democrat if he would have saw how shit was snowballing, too, with the way things changed in the United States. And, like, if JFK Jr. really is alive and came back, which is still hoping so, <laughs> uh, I don't foresee him coming back and trying to run as a Democrat. I think that the whole party is compromised now. It's time for new. I really think this is, we are, I, we really are approaching a whole new world. We just need, like I said, what, what I know to be what will happen is that Trump will win. It will happen through the law courts. Everything will unravel. And my hope is just that I can't wait to see the media clean, the media truthfully reporting the truth. And I believe we'll get there by March. So, really? um, yeah. So the wow. thing, I know that that's his next target. As soon as this, this is done, as soon as it's made official, there will be a transition. And the media is what, as we just concluded, is controlling people on the wrong side. So if he can get control of that, it changes everything. Um, that's our greatest enemy right now, is the media, because these lemmings still follow the media. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's another thing I've been thinking about too, is like these people, don't really have much of a chance to change their mind unless they start digging into their own thoughts and looking into research because if they just go strictly off media, media, they're going to be lost forever. Mm -hmm. They're just constantly being misled by false narratives and all this bullshit agenda. It's, um, it's a mess. It's up for you guys. Anybody listening most likely is already thinking like how we do. We don't have a ton of left listeners, but if we do, we're not discriminating you. We're just challenging you to think for yourself. You need to, Sit, it's not stand back and just look at everything not look at the emotion naive. you know don't be naive because they're naive yeah. thinking, oh if you're gay you're meant to vote this way if you're black you're meant to vote this way if you're jewish you're meant to vote this way it's like no that is that is a mind control program that has been literally put into you and is being kept going through generations no question it look at it for yourself and in fact I know, and I'll make a joke. Imagine that there was a whole race of people with blue hair like me, and they were like, blue he blue head people vote Democrat. I would find it quite embarrassing that they would assume, just because I had blue hair, that they could control me. And I would want to naturally make my own decision. And so we just need to encourage people to make a decision not based upon what they've just, you know, what they've just heard growing up or what's expected within a particular community. Um, the elves, no, not the elves, the Smurfs. Yeah, imagine the Smurfs. Oh, imagine Smurfs for real with their blue hair. That the Smurfs 
have to vote Democrat and I'm of Smurf. And so in which case that's what I'm expected to do. That's, that's how I see it. I just see them blindly following something. But you know, with the work that I do as a spiritual master, as a spiritual coach, I know that only a small percentage of humanity is actually ready to do the work that will raise their vibration and get them, you know, opening their heart and becoming service to others. And this means that it's not for everybody, you know? So, but we can only try because every time you start to give up and you're like, gosh, no one else is listening. And then somebody, somebody like I had a girl say like a rude message to me on my Instagram, but I responded and said, uh, no, you're completely wrong. Cause da, 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 da. And then she was like, oh, and then I sent her some links to like all of the Kaborn things. She's like, oh my God, I didn't think any of this stuff was real. It's real. Oh my God. So she was a turnaround. She was a full turnaround. And I've had, uh, you know, I've had a, quite a lot of those. And that's just the ones I know about because a lot of people tell me that, you know, I've helped with that. But individuals that I, I specifically have changed their direction. Um, you know, we have to keep trying. But there's the way that I was shown the adage is basically it's like we have a bottle of water. And you go to give the bottle of water to one person, they'll drink it like someone that's thirsty and they'll say, thank you, thank you. And they'll drink the water. The other person will smack the bottle of water out of your hand like you were going to attack them with it. Yeah, yeah. So if, they, if, they, if you go to give them the water and they smack it out of your hand, just turn around and start walking. Don't even bother because there's no chance. It's not going to happen. They're not going to hear you. They're not going to listen. Um, oh, and finally, my guys just said the other thing about the, um, the intelligent stupids is that they actually have a sense of superiority about them. They feel superior to Trump supporters because they feel like they're superior because they're in this neutral position. And that's again, a mind control program relating to the ego. Cause one of the things that the ego likes to do is to feel superior to others. So you can tell that they still have spiritual healing to do because they get high on that feeling of spiritual, uh, sorry, that feeling of being superior. And you can hear it the way they lord over you like, ah. Yeah. Two wings are the same bird, you silly person. They talk to you like they're talking down to you. So you can see, I, what I'm doing right now is just educating people how to recognize the mind control programs. Because when you can recognize them, it stops them from having any effect upon you. You know, people can't upset you. You'll be able people screaming in your face and you're like, oh, okay, that one's on the hatred one. Oh, okay, cool. On to the next. Like, do you know what I mean? It makes the world different when you can understand why people do what they do and why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah, right. that's got to be half the battle is just recognizing what's going on around you. Yeah, what sure. what people are trying to push on you, or that's got to be half the battle right there. Just re just recognizing it. What you're saying too it really uh, hits me as a dad because uh, my my son gets bullied a lot. He's out, he's a little off with certain things. He's got Asperger's and stuff. But what you're saying really um, works for bullying too. Like for if kids could understand that and and understand what another kid is doing to them, where it's coming from, they wouldn't take it to heart as much. Yes, exactly. Be exactly. Awesome for kids a bit well, first thing, so the Asperger's, that's actually going to end up being a gift when we get to the other side. So just understand that's connected with a lot of the children, a lot of the star children. They're too, it's because they're too sensitive for the way the world is right now. But when we yeah. shift over to the 5D, the, the world of love and the positive world we're bringing in, your son's going to flourish there. It's gonna, he's it's gonna, he's going to absolutely flourish. Um, and then the other thing is, yes, when you can explain to him that children bully because they are, their heart is empty and they're sad. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying, they see that he's happy and they're trying to take some of his happiness to fill up their sadness. And that's the way you can explain like it to that. Yeah. that whenever anybody is being mean to him, he's to look at them with compassion and understand, oh, you want some of my happy? Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, he needs, yeah. some, you want some of my happy? You're lacking happy. You're not happy, are you? You see what I'm saying? You can literally say to him, you're not happy, are you? Because you want some of my happy. That's really yeah. cool. I'm going to talk to my wife about that. We're going to work with him on that because uh, that would definitely help a lot because he's a very, he's super intelligent. Like he doesn't have much social uh, common knowledge with uh, common sense or anything, but if he's, he's kind of analytical, analytical. So if we broke it down like that, I think that would help him a lot. Yeah, that's what my angels just said, to tell him that they're basically, you explain it to him that he has a full tank of happy, like a car has gas right. in it, he has a full tank of happy, and their car doesn't have a full tank, and so they need to try and take some of his. And so that's why he doesn't have to let them have any of it, though. He can just say to them, I'm sorry you're unhappy, and just walk away. He doesn't have to allow them to have any of his happy. That's his happy. They don't that's get really to take cool. it. Yeah, thank you for that. Good.
No care. problem. Well, maybe if your wife wants to write a children's book with me, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> we actually talked about doing one. We've been talking about it for a couple of years now. I have a premise that I don't want to get out there. I need to just knock it out. Are, well, you, are we, you writing books too? Are you doing some books? I have another children's book that I've been talking about as well called The, Mount, the Mud Mountain People, which was imagine humanity was all, all people made out of mud, like mud covered in mud. So you can't uh -huh. see properly smell properly move properly and imagine if humanity just was always covered in mud and when a baby's born it just gets covered in mud so it's just this constant we're all covered in mud and then one day someone goes and stands under a waterfall and it all gets washed off and suddenly they're like i can see properly i can hear properly i can smell properly you know and so it's this idea that we're all carrying around all this dirt and hurt and stuff childhood trauma generational trauma karmic trauma all this stuff and we can wash ourselves clean of it and be free and be you know and, and live in a great space and so um that was another book that i'm thinking about putting together as well and making it like a children's book yeah i like that that's really cool uh yeah. that just rem reminded me my wife and i are writing a book about some mud people uh, on a mountain uh, we're gonna take that idea <laughs> well we can do it all together the thing is with me and this right now <laughs> things to do that i'm being guided to do that i have to partner with people so you know i'm looking for partners for the children's books um, well, if you ever need any illustration help, I would love to help you. I do drawing well, and stuff. So there you are. Well, I think that's what this was the reason. The main reason why God wanted us to meet is so that exactly that. Yeah. Literally, me, you, and your wife, we can put together some children's books. Why not? Let's do it. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So, where did the blue hair come from? It looks very pretty, by the way. But where did you come up with the idea to go blue? I seen you had pink at some point too, huh? Yeah, so I was I was white blonde with unicorn colors. So even though any pictures where you see it blonde, I really had unicorn colors, pastels, very subtle that in daylight it looked wonderful, but it wasn't very bright. And then when COVID happened, my hairdressers closed and instead of getting my roots done, I saw a, um, not an emoji, yeah, one of those moving emojis on Instagram. And it was this pretty girl with like this color hair and it was just a little emoji girl. She was, going, she was doing some silly face or something. And I went, oh, I've got that hair color in the bathroom. Because I bought a bunch of hair color samples. And I was like, I'm going to dye my hair blue. And so then I posted on Instagram this, this picture of this girl. She's gone now. It doesn't exist anymore. But I posted it and I was like, I'm going to do this to my hair. So then once I posted it, then I had to do it. And so then I just did it. And then I loved it. And it's just been fun and that's it. I mean, I, it's just, it's just all fun, really. Yeah, that's what it's uh, all about. And at this time in the world, that's what people need. And, you know, I won't have it like this forever, but it's just, it's fun. And it fits with where we are right now, I think. Yeah, for sure. I see you pop on uh, Instagram live a lot <clears throat> and I try to catch as many as I can. But I've been drawn to you for a while now. I just feel like you have a lot of good energy, and I thought you'd be a good guest for us, and I wanted to get you on the show. I'm glad we got that to happen. Yeah, um, no, I appreciate it, definitely. I actually have another live coming up. I've got a little 15-minute break, and then I'm going to be on with um, Venice Beach Club. I don't know okay, if you know cool. him, I'll be on with him in 15 minutes. And then um, on – I'll just tell you what I have coming up. Because um, – Today's the 10th, right? It is. So tomorrow I actually have three lives. I have a live with uh, Kevin J at six, who I believe is, uh, he's a blue check mark. So there's, um, I, I don't know all the background on that one, but there's Kevin J at six. At 4.44 I have one with Jen, and then on uh, eight o'clock one with Dr. Chanel, who is also friends with a lot of my friends. And I did an interview with Dr. Charlie Ward yesterday that's up on Dr. Charlie's um, website. So there's all sorts going on. It's like I said, it's a very busy time. Um, I'm glad I got to meet you. And I'm glad we got to figure out who's doing the books and the illustrations with me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You have time to do the six questions with us? The what? Six questions. We do um, six let's questions at the end of every episode. And then I'll have my little break because I do want to have my little break. Yeah, I'm sorry. What'd you say? I missed you. It cut out when I was talking. No, it's fine. So, yeah, let's do the six questions real okay. quick. All right. Sounds good. Number one, you have the power to make one law. What law do you create? Love everybody. Okay. That's good. It's very fitting. <laughs> Number two, what three words would you choose to describe yourself? I love me. Okay, there we go. That's the first I've heard that. Yeah. That's good. Number three. Let's what? Everybody 
if everyone had that role, this world would be heaven right now. You have to love yourself. And that's how everything starts with that. Yeah, it makes sense to everything you said, for sure. Number three, what do you want to be remembered for? <sighs> Helping to create peace on earth. You're doing it. I'm Number trying. four. <laughs> Number four, what is something you like that most people don't know about you? Something I like. Kickboxing. Oh, I, okay. Yeah, I used to do language. Yeah, I used to do kickboxing in my early 20s and I really enjoyed it. I used to be like a full contact, all male class and I was the only girl. Occasionally there was a little tiny Chinese black belt girl that would show up, but it was full contact. So we actually punched each other, you know, um, and I really liked it and it was fun. So I'd like to get back to that at some point. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Love it. Number five, if you could have any superpower, which would you choose? Oh, flying. Yeah. Yeah. Spreading love all over real fast. Huh? Just flying, just because, I mean, I, think, I don't know if anyone else has this, but I've had dreams throughout my life where I, I'm flying, so I want to be able to actually do that. That would be nice. Yeah, I've only had one dream like that, and it was incredible. So it definitely makes me want to fly, too. Um, number six, if you could know the absolute truth on one conspiracy theory, which would you choose? Oh, gosh. Um, which one do I not know the answer to? Because I do, I, I found it my... I have found it my way to actually know most of them. Gosh, that might be the hardest question. I don't know. Um, what does Simon Parks not know? Because he's actually a friend of mine as well. So he kind of helps me with knowing things and he knows everything. So I don't know. We need to get him on the show too. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit difficult, but you know. <laughs> Robert David Steele and him just did a show. And it was so funny because Robert didn't realize me and him knew each other. I was like, that's Simon. That's my friend. <laughs> Um, gosh, that's the hardest question. I, you, you've stuck me because I can't think. Maybe you could suggest some that you think, and, I, and I'll see if I don't know the answer to them. I'll just name off some cliche ones. Uh, me and JP will name them off. Uh, JFK. 9-11. Uh, Area 51. Um, dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, Anunnaki, ancient civilizations. Ooh, that's true. We all know that. <laughs> I feel like it. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, sorry. It's, it's sorry. It's just I, I do have, um, I don't know. You lose, I'm getting, I'm getting stuck on this one. Um, conspiracy. Uh, Pizzagate, um, which I believe is true. Um, oh, all of these are true. You know, moon, we didn't go to the moon, la di la di la, it was filmed. And, yeah. and the thing is, like, I've made it my business to know these things. So I'm struggling, like, because if there was something I really wanted to know, I would have asked Simon Parks. That's basically the answer I would have asked him, you know? Right. Um, what about something I, that's like Hollow Moon or Agartha? Yeah, maybe, maybe like, like maybe I would just like to have someone that I'd, I'd like to literally see inside in Earth and like, like the tribes that live down there and stuff yeah. like that. I'd like to just, so I, so I know they're there, I just would like to see it. Yeah. That was, that's how I would say it. I would like to, I would like either, Send me a video, do a Zoom call, or take me there, but I want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Send our <laughs> drone down there, the Truth of Theory drone. Yeah. Exactly. Right. We're yeah. going to touch you loose, Amelia, so you can do your thing. I appreciate you coming on. Where can we uh, support you and go um, find all your links and all that good stuff? Okay, so um, I'm most active on Instagram, so that's Amelia Happiness Guru. I do have a YouTube, Amelia Happiness Guru. I have Facebook, Amelia Love. I will have Twitter uh, in the next two weeks and that will just be Amelia Happiness, but um, I need to go on there and do, I haven't been on there in seven years, so I need to put some updated stuff. Um, and that's the main things. And then my website is howtobehappy.com, spelled with just the letter B, howtobehappy.com and amelialoveworld.com. Um, and I think I've sent them all over to you as well. Did you get them? You've got the links? I don't think I do, but I'll get them from you, though. I'll okay, make sure I'll we have them. So I'll we send both them to you so you have them. Perfect. Okay. Well, it was lovely to meet you both. Lots of love. Likewise. Thank you Thank so much, you. Amelia. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.